I the double I'll do that gently so I don't break any ears. Okay, I think um, we're going to go ahead and get started with the meeting. Hello. <laughs> okay, they are trying at this time to dial in with um, Commissioner Friend, who is, I assume, out of town. And so, um, are we all set now? Can we hear him? Yes. Okay, so that's we're good. Okay. I'm sorry. I couldn't I talked to Rodney. Well, I haven't called the meeting to order yet, so I can't oh, yeah, really sure. do that. Um, at this time, at this time, I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Lynn Haven City Commission. It's Tuesday, August the 29th. This is a special uh, meeting, um, really, for um, actually two items. We're glad to see so many of you here today, and, and thank you for being here. Um, before um, I begin with item number two, the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance, I would like to um, just check and make sure that Commissioner Friend is able to hear um, the proceedings. Commissioner Friend, can you hear me okay? Commissioner Friend, can you hear me okay? okay I'm going to take that as, as a negative and go ahead and proceed with the meeting and then if you're able to connect Mr. Friend or Commissioner Friend at any time, um, we'll be happy to interrupt and um, move that he be accepted to participate in the meeting by telephone. So we'll just put that off for a moment if that's okay with everyone. Um, at this time, I would like to call on my um, good friend, uh, Mr. Leon Miller, who will be leading us in our invocation. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Would you please stand? Thank you so much. And before we get started, I would just like to echo um, Mr. Miller's thoughts about the people of Texas. We've all been through our share of, of storms and water and flooding um, here in our area. And if you're like me and, and you lived here in 1995 and we had our last catastrophic storm, which was Hurricane Opal, uh, we experienced catastrophic flooding. And um, I have to say that the first sounds I heard the morning after the floodwaters receded were the sounds of both Salvation Army and Red Cross trucks going through our neighborhood, offering hot meals. Um, city employees were out um, all night in boats and helping people. And uh, it, was, it was a horrific night. And then just two days later, um, one of our Lynn Haven churches, the pastor knocked on the door and had a basket, literally a basket on his arm with $100 and $500 checks written with blanks for people to fill in, handing out to people trying to help. So um, please be generous. It could be us as easily as it is them. And uh, there are many different ways to give. And um, at this time, um, if I could get a motion from someone on the commission um, to approve um, uh, Commissioner Friend's participation either by phone and if that doesn't work out to approve his absence from the meeting. If you could make it a double-edged sword of a motion, that'll take care of all of it. Move approval. Thank you. There's been a motion and an approval. A second, rather. Um, Mr. Uh, White, would you please call the roll for 
Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And so um, either by phone or by absence, um, we have approved um, Commissioner Friend's participation or lack of. And uh, Commissioner Friend, if at any time you can hear us and you want to jump in, please feel free to do so. Okay, moving on to item number Sorry. three. Um, this is approval to change the city commission meeting from Tuesday, September the 12th, which is our normal scheduled meeting, at 4 p.m. to Monday, September the 11th, 2017, at 5.01 p.m. Preceding the commission meeting will be a 3.30 p.m. Uh, fiscal year 17-18 budget workshop and then a CRA meeting at 4.30. So a very um, busy afternoon. The reason for the change in time is that other agencies within Bay County are having to have their budget meetings um, to make sure that we all get in before the, the closing date of the state uh, statute. And so therefore, we're having to have ours on Monday at 5.01. So please mark your calendars and, and plan to be here. Is there a motion um, to approve? So moved. Second. So there's been a motion and a second. Um, any questions from the board about this? Any questions from the public? Hey, Mr. White, would you please call the roll for approval? Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Russell? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Commissioner Tender? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And so the motion stands approved. And then item number four is discussion and action to approve the new insurance broker's group insurance plans and rates for employer-employee contribution levels. At our last commission meeting, um, there was a report brought to the commission regarding the um, sealed bid for the RFQs, which went out for the insurance proposals. And um, the, um, it was recommended the, to the commission that we accept a Bentrust um, insurance company. And um, there was approval by the commission. And then there has been movement forward in that direction since um, by the city manager. So at this time, I would like to turn over um, this portion of the meeting to our city manager, Mr. White, and to representatives from Abintra. And, and then at um, the conclusion of their presentation, if there are questions from the board, questions from the public, questions from other agencies, um, it'll be an open discussion before the commission votes for approval. Okay, this time. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as you all may know and remember, uh, we was, we was uh, being pressed a little bit for time, but one of the things that I looked at as soon as I got here was insurance. Uh, one of the first things a lot of employees is in the audience that uh, recommended to me that I need to look at the insurance. And after looking at the pricing and looking at the way it's put together, uh, I think there was a you know a need for more services. So that's the reason we done the RFQ and y'all approved uh, last meeting uh, of interest as as the provider uh, based on uh, the service the services they offer and them being able to meet the real deadline that we have and, and we are on timetable. So at this time I'd like to uh, ask Owen Wingate from Aventris to step up and each of you have a packet and he's going to go through a lot of highlights. I encourage you to ask him questions. Uh, I also will be interjecting throughout the presentation to try to uh, let you know where we're at currently versus this new and that way maybe fill in some of the gaps. This time Owen. Uh, thank you very much. Can you all hear me? I use my uh, outside voice. <clears throat> uh, thank you guys for a vote of trust. And uh, my brother Wes Wingate here and I are, uh, own Adventurous, and we are Adventurous is ac actually an acronym for A Benefit Administrator. So in addition to being just a regular insurance broker, we're actually a full service benefit administrator. So we'll go through the presentation. I have it up here on the PowerPoint. It's going to be very hard for the people in the back to see, unless they have laser light focus. But uh, y'all have this in front of you, and uh, what you're looking at here is page one, and I'll just briefly hit some of the highlights, but some of the services that we have proposed that we provide for you are, these are all services that are at no cost to the city, okay? You're already basically, we get paid a compensation for handling your account, and we pay for these services for you. So your annual benefit plan marketing, we'll be marketing the uh, plan to other insurance carriers. We have an online enrollment system of venturous access that we will give you guys, and everybody in the, the company will be able to access their benefits online. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we did not build the adventurous access system ourselves. We actually access it from another vendor. There's 27 million people on the platform. So basically Google, Under Armour, some of the big companies that are on that. We're gonna provide your full service COBRA administration. It's actually integrated into the platform. So some of the stuff's just administrative that's gonna take off the work of the staff. Open enrollment support, we have a full team that's gonna come in and help you open enrollment. 
benefit reporting 1094, 1095, you're something with the ACA that you had to do with the uh, reporting last year. We're going to do your reporting for you as we move forward. We do monthly premium reconciliation where we actually send you guys one consolidated premium every month. Y'all send us one check and then we pay all the different vendors so that you're not having to reconcile multiple bills, uh, which is very efficient, saves time, saves money. Uh, Billy is our monthly consolidated premium invoicing. Claim advocacy, if somebody has a problem, the employees call us. We want them to call us and we will help them through their claim problems that they're having. So anytime that there's an issue, they're going to call a ventress. We have an assigned account coordinator. We'll go through this with you guys as well. Y'all don't have to worry about 5500 preparation. And we do do CMS filings, which is the Center for Medicare Services. You have to do two times a year. We'll do that for you. So that's just kind of a brief, very fast overview of some of the services that we do. Um, we also do uh, lots of stuff that's in this book, so I won't spend a lot of time on it, but the, we're going to go over medical insurance, dental insurance, vision insurance, health reimbursement accounts. This is going to be like drinking through a fire hose for a few minutes, so if you all bear with me and please ask questions as we go. Okay. Let's go ahead and go to page three. Moving right along here. Okay. So one of the things that we do is help keep you compliant. Uh, we're because we are administering the benefits, we're working on compliance. Because you'll have over 50 full-time employees, you have to be compliant. Uh, premium affordability is one of those. You all actually fail that test today. Um, if we go through it, the employees cannot spend more than 9.69% of their income on the health insurance. Currently, you guys, that for your number, that is they can't spend more than $1,962 a year. You're at $2,140 a year. So basically, you fail the test. Um, the fine for the test, if some of the employees were to get a subsidy from the government because it's cheaper for them, would basically be $2,260 an employee minus the first 30 folks. So about $275,000 for the group. So we think that's kind of important that we address that. The out-of-pocket maximums under health care reform cannot exceed $7,150. Y'all are fine there, or $14,300 for a family, so you're good there. Summary benefit coverages are provided by Florida Blue, and you guys are providing those to the employees, so you're fine there. Exchange notice distributions, we've discovered that we need to be doing a little better job on that, so we're going to help you guys through that a little bit. And then the waiting period cannot exceed 90 calendar days, and your first of the month fall in 30 days, so you're fine. Okay. A little bit about our company. We, West and I, own the company and come up with the, the planning here. Ashley is going to be y'all's assigned account coordinator. Jenny, we have one person that's assigned to you guys for, uh, for actual compliance to make sure everything's right. She does all the paperwork and everything. And then we have a billing department that takes care of all the bills. So, Some of the things to think about as we move forward, as uh, Mr. White was telling us, we were charged with getting better benefits for the employees. So we're thinking about that as we move forward. Flexible spending accounts is something that you do not, guys do not currently have that you all could offer to the employees. And basically that allows them to pre-tax some money that they pay for their deductibles and co-insurance and co-pays. They can put it away, take it out of their check, put it into an account. They can use a debit card to access those funds and pay for any of their out-of-pocket expenses. Could I add to that? Uh, a little bit of this mission is, is uh, a lot of times it's hard to for people come out some money out of their pocket, some of the employees come out of their pocket with uh, co-pays or and or some of their deductibles. So they'll be able to payroll deduct prior to taxing uh, up to, uh, is it $2,600? $2,600. Up to $2,600 that they can put in that account and they'll be given a, basically a visa card. So if they go get their medicine, they can use it then. If they go to the doctor, co-pay, they can use it there. And it's slowly, it allows them to help manage their budget a lot more. Basically what happens, in the, and that's a very good uh, description of it, what happens is if you put $100 of pay period, you'll get paid 24 times a year. If you put $100 of pay period into the flexible spending account, that money becomes available to you on the first day of the plan year. So the whole $2,400. So if you have a high deductible, you have high expenses. If you go out, out of pocket, that allows you to use that to help pay for that. So if you're a chronic user of the plan, and one of the things that we're going to talk about as we move forward here in a little bit, I've got some claims and information here. As you can see, y'all have people that are chronic users. That's what the plan's for, is to help those people pay for their medical expenses. But you have a whole bunch of people that are using the, not using the plan that way, and so we want to help both people, okay? So we'll kind of go through that. So something to think about as we move forward is the flexible spending account. 
I put a little presentation in here for you to see. There is a charge for the administration on the flexible spending account. They charge discovery benefits. We actually use an outside administrator. It's a straight cost. It's four dollars and eighty-five cents per employee per month that takes the plan. We don't pay anything for anybody if they don't take it. The city actually, for whatever money the employees contribute to the plan, the city doesn't have to match Social Security taxes or FICA taxes on those employees. So you save at least 7.65% of every dollar that the employees contribute, you're saving. So it kind of offsets the cost of the administration of the plan. So, so just food for thought, there's a little bit. Wes, would you so one of my thoughts is there, uh, I, would, I would like for y'all consider, uh, the first thing would be uh, the city picking up the cost for administration for this. Uh, because we, we are saving money on the backside as far as Social Security taxes, but it, it'll give the employees an opportunity to prepare for sickness and illness that may occur in their family. So this is $4.85 per month? Per, per employee that participates per month, okay, yes sir. So if they contribute $100, they're saving $7.65 in taxes. Well, they're saving more than that. You guys are saving $7.65 in taxes. The way your plans are set up, you're gonna, you would have, you can see in here, they show an example of 150 employees and that uh, 22 part people participate. Not tons of people participate in these programs. There are some rules which our staff would go through the rules. If you don't use the money by the end of the year, you could lose the money. So we don't want you to over budget. We want you to under budget. But our staff's very familiar with how to enroll this and how to help the people figure out what their budgets are based on their own plan usage. So they can help walk them through that. Any more questions on that? I'll flip the page. Okay. So for the health insurance, we're going to kind of go through the, some claim data, what your current plan designs look like, what the renewal for the current plans look like, and then we put some alternates in here for you guys. Based on the timing that you had, we didn't have any time to go to market to kind of look at other carriers. So it's literally, this is what we have. The good news is Florida Blue owns the panhandle. Okay, so most of the companies around here are covered by Florida Blue. They have a great network of, of providers for everybody. People are familiar with them, so it works very well. So as we look on the next page, which is page nine for you guys, this is a high cost claimant summary, and you cannot see this from the back of the room, okay? But if you saw this, basically what this shows us is on, the, on this page, we had 12 people that had claims on this page that went over $5,000 last year. Okay, in the last 12 months, it's a rolling 12 month period. And then on the next page, which we'll flip to in a minute, there's another uh, 14, 18 people. So we had 29 people last year that used claims in excess of $5,000. The highest one being in total billed claim of $1,798,000 at the very top. And the insurance company paid $110,000 of that million seven billed claim. Okay, so that's important for us to know because as we flip the pages and start going through, a lot of times we're scared about how much the bills are but when you start looking at how much stuff got paid with the insurance providers, uh, network discounts, things that are double billed, that kind of stuff, it helps really kind of get a picture of, we have 30 people basically that really use the insurance, but you had 60, you basically you have 100 people that didn't use it that much at all. So we have to take care of both of those sets of people, okay? So we won't spend a lot of time on that, but Y'all can go through that list and you can see what some of the conditions were on the left. There's no personal health information on there. There's nobody's names on it or anything like that. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, the next page um, is the prior period. So the year before last, you had 34 people that went over 5,000. So you had more people using the insurance than you did the past year. So it's just kind of give you a little food for thought on that. But you can see the total. If we look at this, by the way, we go back to the first page real quick. $671,000, these 29 people accounted for $671,000 worth of claims. You only had $800,000 of claims for the whole group, okay? So basically, you ended up, the rest of the group only spent $100,000. These 30 people spent all the money, okay? So what we're going to do is we move forward and kind of show you some of the plan designs. I want you all to, to see that we can really help reduce the employee's cost of coverage take care of everybody and still take care of the people that have the high cost claims, which is the goal. Okay, so if let's skip to page uh, 13, if you will. Uh, 13 is about the prescription drugs. So this is just a report on your drug usage as, as it may be. $200,000 of y'all's claim spend is prescriptions. 200,000 of the 800,000, okay? 
So basically it's prescriptions, huge money. But y'all's plans that you have, y'all have three plans that are grandfathered, what they call grandfathered under the ACA. So there's really, they don't have some of the newer things that people are doing to help save money. So this shows us here that basically of the prescriptions, so if you look at the very top, and you all can see this, it's hard to see on the screen, I apologize. But you all had total pe people using, getting a prescription filled of 108 people. So 108 people that are covered actually got a prescription filled. We had 2,370 total prescriptions for those 108 people. Of the, those 2,002 of those are generic prescriptions. So the majority of the prescriptions are generic drugs. Okay, which is great because we're going to talk about that as we move forward. Multi-source of people that could have taken a generic and they didn't. We had 33 um, prescriptions that could have been generic that weren't. And then the stuff that you saw on TV is what they call multi-source brand without generic. That's everything you see advertised on TV. That's outrageously expensive. We'll talk about how to help the employees go through that and help them save some of their money for themselves. But if we skip down on here a little bit, and I know I'm covering a lot of ground real fast, but you can see the plan pays where it says cost. Plan paid PMPM, $150.35 per member per month just for prescription coverage. So included in, that's included in the premiums along with ex expenses to run the plan, profits for the blues, that kind of stuff. The members paid $30.05 on average for prescriptions. Total generic cost only $44 for the generic drugs and uh, the brand names are $135. So what we're gonna to try to do is get people to talk to their doctors about what do I take? There's no harm in asking. You always wanna do what the doctor wants you to do. There's no harm in asking them, what should I be doing, okay? So as we move a little bit forward, we are gonna talk about generic choices. Uh, Florida Blue has a program called Generic Choices and we think we should put this on one of the plans. And basically that plan limits those people to generic drugs and some name brand drugs. We have thousands of people covered under this. Thousands of people covered under this plan and we don't have anybody calling our office complaining. Okay, it really works well. So we'll go through that in a minute. As we move forward, if y'all will go to page 15, this is where we get into the nuts and bolts on the money. So the actual renewal that Blue Cross and Blue Shield gave you guys after all the, the negotiations and whatnot is they landed on a 3% increase. So if you don't wanna make any plan changes and you just wanted to roll forward, a 3% increase, which in the world we live in today is a good increase, okay? If your rates were lower, but your rates are really, really high, okay? So the 3% is a big number. Y'all's PPO plans that you have, y'all, has anybody heard about the Cadillac tax under the ACA? They talk about it a lot on TV. Explain it. Okay, Cadillac tax basically says that if your plan has more economic value than a set amounts in the uh, ACA, which is $10,000 for single coverage, it's, 10, that's dead, it's not exactly 10, but it's 10-3 or something. And then it's for, for family coverages, if it's over 27,000, that the employer has to pay a 40% excise tax to offer those plans to the employees, okay? That, this has been a huge subject of controversy in the, in the legislature, and they're trying to get it repealed. That's part of the repeal and replace of uh, the ACA. But basically, your highest plan after renewal, you're already at the Cadillac tax. And it goes into effect January 2018 if they don't make, do, make some sort of change, okay? So you're already at the Cadillac tax. So what I tell you is we're really trying to look, how do we avoid that? How do we avoid paying the Cadillac tax for the city? How do we avoid paying some of the high premiums that the employees are paying, okay? So you have a 3% increase with no changes. If you look at the next slide down, it actually breaks down. Now this is to how you read this, if y'all will walk through this with me real quick. What we've done is you'll see the monthly premiums over to on the left. The top section of bars are the monthly premiums. Those are the actual premiums for the insurance. The next is what the employer currently contributes to the cost of the plan. Does everybody see that? So the next row there is the employers. On the far left where you see 22, 1, 4, 1, 0, 4, all those little numbers, that's the number of people that are in each one of those plans accordingly on the plan. So. For instance, in the 5302, you have 22 people that have single coverage. Does everybody see that? It's usually easier for me to stand there and point this out or have a pointer, so. But you have 22 people that are already in the 5302 plan, which that plan has a $5,000 deductible already, and it has some co-pays that you can go. Did you say $5,000? $5,000. Okay. 
deductible? Deductible. So currently today, Already. if you're in that plan and you go to the primary care doctor, you pay a copay. And if you go to the specialist, you pay a copay. And the copayment for that plan currently is thirty dollars if you're single for if you go to a primary and fifty-five dollars if you go to a specialist. Okay, you can see that it's on this little sheet. But if you have to be in the hospital, you've got to pay the first five thousand dollars of the claim. And then the plan pays 80%, you pay 20% until you've reached the max out of pocket of $6,350. Now, in this plan, this is your only plan that is compliant, okay, with the ACA. The other three plans are not compliant. And what that means is the prescription drug card copays do not go to the max out of pocket. They, you don't have preventative care covered at 100%. There's a few other nuances in there. So we're going to recommend that we make all the plans compliant as we move forward, okay? So, on the other plan that you have, the richest plan, most of the people are on your highest option plan, which is a $500 deductible, which is, hey, by the way, it's a lot better than $5,000, right? $500 is a lot better than $5,000. But the employees are paying a tremendous premium to be under that plan for the luxury of having that $500 deductible. So, if you all kind of bear with me for a few minutes as we go through this, it'll make a little bit more sense. So, if we go down the plan, if we look to the next page that we were on a second ago, you'll see what the city contributes. And then what the employees' monthly contributions are. This is what the employees are kicking in towards the cost of the coverage and the employee payroll deductions. So this is where we talked about it, how important it is. So currently for the $5,000 deductible plan, the employees pay $89.17 a pay period for their own coverage. Okay? That's the one that's not compliant. We're charging too much money. Okay? If they had their spouse covered, it's $339 a pay period. Okay, so those are big numbers. If they buy up to the richest plan, so they're going to buy down that deductible and not have that $5,000 deductible, it's $142.47 a pay period for single coverage. And if you're one of the two people that have family coverage, you're already paying $592 a pay period. So huge numbers, okay? It's hard. It's hard, okay? So if we renew it and you pay the same percentages that you're doing today, those numbers are going to go up, okay? If you don't make any changes and say, hey, we like the 3% increase, we're just going to renew it, the single uh, coverage is going to cost $91 a pay period. It's not going to be compliant. You'd have to lower it down a little bit. And on the buyout plan, it would be $146 a pay period. So you can see what those numbers look like. So what our thought process was, if you'll go to the next page, please. First of all, skinny the plan down. So we took out, we went from four to three, if you'll notice that when we flipped the page. You have one plan that nobody's in today. So you already have an offering that nobody's in the plan. So let's eliminate that all, all, all together. And then let's compare the renewal at the 3%, which is the middle section of this, the green section, to an alternate that we think would work great for you guys, okay? Is we keep the 5302 plan, which is your lowest cost plan. But, as I mentioned to you before, we want to focus on the prescriptions because the prescription drugs are driving a big cost in the plan. So in this plan, we think we should adopt the generic choices drug card. Instead of full drug coverage where you can get whatever you want, it's going to limit the employees that take this plan to generic only. Plus, if you're on diabetics, you can get some name brand drugs, but generally it's generic choices. As I mentioned, we have thousands of people covered under it. It works really well. We the, our employees know how to help the employees through this process to make sure that they get where they are. We already know that 85% of all the prescriptions that you guys are getting today are generics anyway. So those people are going to fall into that plan very easily if they want to. If we do that just by changing the drug card, the cost goes down from 700, well the renewal is $734 a month and it goes down to $594 a month. Okay, so we can lower the cost of the plan tremendously. Then, nobody has a $500 deductible anymore, okay? The plan's a dinosaur, which is a really nice thing for your employees that can't afford it. But keep in mind, you have 50 employees that don't even take your insurance, over 50, okay? Don't even take it. They can't afford it, okay? Which is really, we try to make it more affordable for them, okay? So we offer a higher deductible plan, which nobody in the room, especially if you're employees, is going to like seeing that you're going to have a $2,500 deductible. But if you'll bear with us for a few minutes, we're going to fix that. Okay. So at 20, this plan has a $2,500 deductible. 
It pays 80% after the deductible, and the maximum out of pocket is $6,350. And currently, that is only $3,000, okay? But we've got a fix in it if we kind of keep flipping the pages in just a second. The copays go up a little bit. It has a real prescription drug card. You can get any kind of prescription that you want. It is a generic mandatory, so if there is a generic available, the, the pharmacy is going to make you take the generic, okay? But that's standard in the plans of the day. But the cost of the plan for the whole company would go down 13.6%, okay? So the city could save some money. So we drop down to the next page, and we'll come back and go over and answer questions about individual things, okay? We drop down to the next page, and what we were thinking about doing was, how do we get more people involved in the insurance for it to make it a more affordable for the employees? So what we want to do, what our suggestion to you is to do is to pay more towards the cost of the insurance today because we lowered the premium, right? So we lowered the premium. Yes, sir. And I'd like to interject there. <clears throat> Part of the issue, and just let you know, over the few weeks I've been here, uh, we've had probably three or four employees leave, and some of them it's for better opportunity, which I could never fault any employee for leaving the city for a better opportunity, better benefits, and things of that nature. Uh, one thing that I... I heard from y'all, and, and I've heard from the employees, and I appreciate y'all here today, um, is, is the insurance is too high. So one of the things that you, he's fixing to go over is, is paying more towards the employees since we can make some adjustments to lower the overall part. Uh, and that does two things for the city for me. Uh, one, it allows my management team to, for retention of good employees. And also, it gives us a bigger pool of pe possible people we can choose from in the future, because they do they do look at uh, benefits. And for for instance, Matt, we uh, was about ready to offer a job to a young man to, to come on the police force uh, last week. Last week, he went to Panama City. Benefits a little better. He he wouldn't even come back to us. So, you know, just things like that. So. I encourage you when he's going over this, and I, I'll answer any questions. I, I, for the benefit of the employees, I do recommend that y'all uh, look at increasing the amount, which makes us a little bit more competitive with the county and some other local cities because we are losing some employees. Sorry. Owen. So if, if you look at this alternate one on the sheet, the blue for you guys, if y'all can see this. This was, we, made, we have lots of these. If we flip the pages, you're going to see lots more of these. Okay, <laughs> but the alternate one was the same. Pre you'll notice the premium stays the same as the changes that we made on the top page. So it's still ninety thousand, ninety thousand one hundred seventy dollars a month. That is a big, big number. Okay, for all the employees to write a check to Blue Cross, right? Um, the lowest option plan that has the five thousand dollar deductible. We'll get to it in a minute, but we're going to recommend that you guys in implement a health care reimbursement account to help the employees pay for part of that deductible. Okay. So that they don't have a $5,000 deductible, we'll buy down on it, but I'll go over that in just a minute. But the first thing we want to do is how do we fix the cost? So you'll notice on this sheet, what we think y'all should do is pay 90% towards the employee-only coverage. Today, you pay 75% towards the employee-only coverage. And the premium's $200 more a month, okay? So at 90%, the employee's payroll deductions would go from $89 a pay period to $29 a pay period, okay? Happy, happy, okay? Um, and in this situation, we actually, we ran it that on the high option plan, you'd pay 75% of the cost for the high option plan, and those people's payroll deductions would go from 142 a pay period to $105 a pay period. So the city, when we're all said and done, gave back, I basically made a note of this, okay, because it's a big number. Basically, $12,552 a month to the employees, okay? $552 a pay period, excuse me, okay? $25,000 a month to the, to the employees, right back in payroll deduction, less payroll deductions. That's real money, okay? So then we made some other alternates in here. So if you'll look at the next page, we ran multiples of these. Um, so that you could kind of see what it would be with different percentages so that you can pick. But all of this gets you, even after you make these changes and you get the employees lower deductions, you're still at 
a, a very a lot low, lower than our renewal is. So we're spending less money than we do at renewing the plan at three percent increase. And we're all we've done is change the drug card on the low plan. We increase the deductible on the high plan. But let me tell you how the how we envision the health care reimbursement plan would work. Okay. So for you guys if in your uh, we'll come back to this. We'll come back, we'll come back to that last yeah. page. The health care reimbursement plan would work like this. First of all, we'd lower everybody's cost. So you already saw that. So there's going to be people will have more money if they if we adopt the flexible spending plan, they can take some of the money they save, put it in the FSA to help pay for part of their new deductible, okay, that they're going to have that's going to go up. But on the 5302 plan, if y'all could see this from the back, y'all would see that the deductible is $5,000. And the employee's responsibility, we think, should be the first $4,000 of that deductible. Okay, so the, the city would kick in the last $1,000 of the deductible. But the employee is going to save, sheet over here, they're going to save a couple of thousand dollars in payroll deductions. So when we're all said and done, we're actually lowering how much money the employees would have to pay if they have a catastrophic event. And if there's somebody that hardly ever uses the plan, which you do have some of those, they just put, save money. That's just money in the bank for them. Okay. And cur if, currently, Owen oh, explained to them that, you know, currently the city does not help out with any of that reimbursement. Currently the city pays for none of the deductibles and no of the coinsurance. So, and this is just food for thought, okay, but what we think is if you pay for $1,000 of the deductible on both plans, the last 1000 employees need to have some skin in the game, so to speak. They, we want them to ask questions when they go to the doctor and that kind of stuff. And then after the deductible, there's a coinsurance percentage. So on the low plan, after you meet your $5,000 deductible, the plan pays 80%, you pay 20%. We would recommend the city pick up all the 20% coinsurances. We're, we would administer the health care reimbursement plan for you guys at no cost, okay? So we will administer that for you. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, could you repeat that again? So our company, Adventures, we are a licensed third-party administrator, so we'll administer the health care reimbursement. Now the part about we'll co who's covering the 20%? The city, oh, you're so talking the city about would cover the last 20%. So the city's liability on a single person or any person that's covered, basically, would be the 2300 it'd be $2,350. Okay, so it'd be a thousand dollars for the deductible, and then that coinsurance is uh, twenty is thirteen hundred and fifty dollars. So we'd cover that thirteen fifty for that person too. So it would be twenty three fifty if somebody had a catastrophic claim. Okay, under the high option plan, we would have the same thing. Everybody would get reimbursed some money. The employee would have a twenty five hundred dollar deductible. They would be responsible for the first fifteen hundred dollars of that deductible. And then the uh, city would pay for the last thousand, and then they would max out of pocket six thousand three hundred fifty dollars, and they would be responsible for paying twenty percent, up to sixty three fifty, up to thirty three hundred and fifty dollars, and then the last thirteen fifty of that would be covered at hundred percent. Okay, somebody would have to have greater than a sixteen thousand dollar claim if they were in that plan to, to hit that number, and we had ten people that had that, but those ten people didn't all get deductible usage. Some of them are just just drugs and they would have just paid a copayment. Okay, so realistically, if we have 10 reimbursements, we'll plan for 20, okay, which is $47,000. If we plan for 20 people to use all the money, it's $47,000. And what we're doing here, we're, we're betting against the chances that the employees go over the amount on their deductibles or meet their deductibles, and if, and if they don't, the plan does better because we're not we we have lower rates because of that. But we're really trying to lower the cost of the employee. I mean, truly. So if we look at it today, and there's a sheet in here. Wes, would you flip forward, please? Uh, that go back. So again, right there. You can't see this from the back, but if you could, I'll walk through it. I'll just tell you the big picture. If you're in the lowest option plan today, this is number uh, in y'all's booklet, page 22. Okay. So y'all have another sheet that's stuck in there because we did that on the fly, the last piece. So we did that at the, the very end, okay? But on page 22, the 5302 plan today, if you're in that plan, you have a deductible that's 5,000, which is in this, this is the middle section of the plan right here, okay? Employee only cost, it costs the employee $2,140 
a year today for coverage under that plan. That's what they're paying for their coverage. If they have full family coverage, which you have somebody that's in that bucket, they're paying $10,683 for that coverage. What we recommend we do is you'd have a $5,000 deductible still. That did not change. The maximum amount of pocket for the employee would be $6,350. The employee's annual cost is $2,140. So basically, if that person had a catastrophic claim, they would pay $8,490 out of their pocket that year. Okay, does everybody see that down there in the middle? If you go over to this alternate one, we would start the 5,000, we didn't change anything there. We didn't change the $6,350 out-of-pocket max. We did change how much the employees pay. Now they only pay $712 a year for the coverage. So they had, we'd give them $2,350 if they had a catastrophic event, okay? And so their cost now would be $4,712. So the math on that's pretty big, right? It's half of what they're spending today. And they get to save $1,427 in premiums. So if they took that $1,427 and put it in a, health, in a flexible spending account, we could lower that $4,700 by the $1,400. They're, they're a lot lower now. They're $3,300, OK, versus $8,400 today. So we're definitely changing how people look at paying for their insurance. On the high option plan, if we use the math that we used in the alternate one, we would have a $2,500 deductible, $6,350 out-of-pocket max instead of $3,000. But because the employee saved so much money, on their, they saved $900, $897 on their payroll deductions after their $2,350 health care reimbursement account, they would have spent $6,500 instead of $6,400. So the employees on the high option plan, they're spending a little bit more, but they're buying up to the richer plan. Those are the people that are a little bit un more unhealthy and then so we did another the, the one that was slipped into your uh, packet you could see that was just a freestanding page that was kind of um, Mr. White had asked us to run it at the employer getting a 95% contribution to the low option plan and an 80% contribution to the higher option plan and basically it makes for a 1.6% increase. That does not include the $47,000 that we would want for the health care reimbursement account to kind of set aside. But even if we add the 47, we're still at, at about a 4% net increase over last year. But the employees now have, uh, they're spending $33,000 a pay period today um, or $33,000 a month today and it would go down to 18,000. So they'd save $18,000. In payroll deductions. So basically, what <clears throat> what the different options there on medical, which we gave gave a total of four with these two plans. Uh, you know, listen to y'all uh, individually and together up here on insurance, and listening to employees and and going through this. You're looking at a besides the health reimbursement account, you're looking at a 1.6 percent increase if you increase the dependent coverage with uh, the employee coverage to 95 percent. So the city would pay 95% of their premium, and the employee would be responsible for five, and then still pay the 60% like we do today on the dependent coverage. And then the more richer plan, we will step it up from 75 to 80% we pay, and then 60% of the dependent costs. So for instance, today, uh, employees are paying $89.17 for the normal plan, the standard plan. Uh, just covers them, right? Just, uh, just covers them. The I'm, only. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, and if you go over to the next column, you'll see they will pay fourteen dollars and eighty-five cents. So the employee basically pay a little over seven dollars a week to cover themselves for insurance. If you do the rich plan, it's going to go from one hundred and forty-two dollars every two weeks to eighty-four oh five, eighty-four dollars and five cents. So each. Each employee, no matter if they decide to go with the 5302, which is a standard plan, or the 5773, will see significant savings. And the overall cost of the plan will only go up with HRA plus the 1.6% uh, compared to what was going to pay a 3% increase. Just playing with the math. Sorry about that. No problem. Don't be sorry. That's good. It really works. You know. So... Um,
you can see kind of what we're trying to do as far as the, the money goes. And our staff is very trained in this to where when they come and visit with the employees, they can explain to them how the generic only card works. They can explain to them, because you'll have a lot of employees maybe I'll gravitate between the higher option plan to the lower option plan. Who, who wouldn't want to pay $14 to pay period for insurance versus 89 You know what I mean? So that's just a thought. So the next, if y'all can flip ahead, we've got a lot of ground to cover still. Uh, on the dental insurance, uh, we did get an option. Um, so we did have time to, we had a whole day to get a, a marketing on this. So we were able to, in a whole day, you can actually get a dental quote, okay? Uh, so we did get a dental quote. So we were able to change the Florida Combined Life Dental Plan to a MetLife plan, and the cost actually stays exactly the same if y'all want to do this, and it makes no difference to us if y'all want to do it. But the, you'll notice the one thing that changes is the max out of pocket. So the maximum benefit would go up from $1,000 to $1,500 a year. So right now the insurance only pay $1,000 a year, and so it would go up to $1,500. So it'd go up 50% for the same amount of money. So the employees would get more benefit for the dollar. And we, you know, based on percentages, you know, because we pay this as well, part of the percentages. So same amount of money, we just get more benefits. Then if you'll go, please bear with me for a minute. Um, the vision plan, we actually, uh, y'all do not have a vision plan today. This would be a voluntary benefit, so you wouldn't have, um, people don't have to buy it if they don't want to. But if they want vision coverage, uh, they can get a plan that basically covers their eye exam for $10, contact lenses exam for $60, uh, they get $130 allowance for frames, $70 allowance at Costco. You can see the little list there. And it's $7.82 a month or $3.91 a pay period for single coverage. So really inexpensive. They can pre-tax this, so it really costs them less money. Uh, we're big fans of pre-tax money. Saves you at least 22 and a half cents on every dollar you spend. So you're already doing it on the medical insurance. We would just pop the vision insurance on there as well. That's just an option to basically round out your benefit plan uh, for the vision. It's voluntary, doesn't cost the city any more money, and just a benefit for your employees kind of building uh, that for you. Can I ask how many people do we have on that dental plan now? I do not have that in front of me. I don't. It is. Oh, I've got it. So we have uh, 76 people that have single coverage, 21 employee spouses, 13 employee children, and 22 full families. So quite a bit. So. so I think our goal is to try to get as many employees on this plan and at the same time put more money in their pocket. Absolutely, sir. That's what this was all about. And, and increasing the service where right now we do not have an HR person, so Vicki has having to do multiple duties. Uh, God bless her for that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so uh, they would become an extension of us. Uh, if we'll go a little bit, we had some ideas on the life insurance also, uh, if you'll move ahead a little bit. Uh, currently, you all provide, the county or the city provides every employee with $25,000 worth of life insurance, every full-time employee, so if they happen to, uh, to die while they're employed, uh, they have $25,000 worth of coverage. Uh, we would recommend that you guys, there's no increase on the premium on that if you wanted to leave it the same, but we'd recommend that you all move it to $50,000 worth of coverage at $50,000 level. You don't have to do any special tax reporting or anything, so you just move the employees from $25,000 to $50,000, and you can do that for $625, $640 for the whole group a month. So it doesn't cost a lot of money to give all the employees an extra $25,000 worth of coverage. So for $600, you can see the total premium there for the whole group would be $1,650. Right now you're spending $1,012, so it wouldn't cost a whole lot of money for everybody to get another $25,000 worth of coverage. Y'all probably had $25,000 for a very long time. Funerals used to cost $25,000. Now they cost fifty. dollars So, you know, cost a little bit more money. Um, the next page of page 29, um, we would recommend that you offer your employees a voluntary group term life insurance, which is very, very inexpensive uh, group term life insurance on a voluntary basis. So the employees could buy this with no evidence of insurability up to $100,000 worth of coverage. So what that means is, is that uh, if they wanted to buy an extra $50,000 worth of coverage, and on your program on the right-hand side right here, we've got some ages, and it shows you how much it costs. 
So if I'm 43 years old and I want to buy an extra $50,000 worth of coverage, it's 19 cents a thousand. Okay? Um, and you can see there the total annual premium is $9.50 a year. Okay? For that. So really inexpensive coverage for that. Okay? Um, the, on the, I'm going kind of fast, so if y'all want me to slow down, I'll slow down, but I figured we'd get through it and then we'd have Q&A, right? Uh, on the long-term disability, this is something that we just threw out there to round out your benefit package. It's something you don't have right now. So if an employee gets sick or hurt off the job, they have no coverage, right? Here they're covered by workers' compensation, but if they get sick or hurt off the job, it, you, you got to work it out. So this would be a program that you would offer. Um, we have it run here as employer paid, okay? So in other words, the city would actually pay for this. We could do it voluntary if you wanted to, but it would cost a lot more money. But it basically would pay the employee 60% of their income up to $5,000 a month if they got long, disabled and they couldn't come to work. So after the 91st day, they would start accruing benefits. 120 days later, they get a check. Okay? So um, it would be employer paid. Some of the stuff that's in here, we just it's got a pre-existing condition on it. So if somebody has a pre-existing condition today, they already have cancer, they already have stroke, they have to be, have had a stroke or a heart attack, and they're back to work. They have to be covered under this plan for 12 months before they're covered for that condition. But for everything else that's wrong with them, they'd be covered from day one. Okay? So long-term disability, and uh, you can see there, so for the whole group, it's $3,184 a month. So a little bit more expensive there than some of the other stuff, but you're also, if somebody goes out and they're 30 years old, and they get $3,000 a month, they're going to pay them that until they're, they're their normal Social Security retirement age, which is 67 years old if you're 50 years old today. Okay, so just a little bit on that. Y'all ready to move on? I'm just moving right along here, aren't I? And then um, once the system is actually built, it takes us about 90 days to build the, actual en the electronic enrollment system. But this, all these benefits will be in one place so that everybody can see it. One of the things that we can put on there, voluntary group critical illness plan. So it basically covers every single person. Uh, for if they, This is voluntary. So employees would do this if they wanted to. They don't have to do it if they don't want to. But a lot of them would have this type of coverage today. But this would be... Um, a $10,000 benefit if they had a cancer, stroke, heart attack, that kind of stuff, uh, would pay a flat $10,000 benefit. And you can see that the rates are down here at the bottom. So for $10,000, if you're uh, 40 to 49 years old, it's $20.61 a month. So about $10 a pay period for single coverage on that. And if you wanted to cover your spouse, she's $11 uh, additional, so a month. So another $5 basically, okay? So basically, help the employees offset the cost if they got um, sicker, had one of those uh, illnesses, critical illness that they had. It's a first occurrence benefit. It has some recurrence benefits in there, but it really just kind of helps the employee put money in their pocket if they have one of those things. Um, Participation-wise, we don't have a participation requirement, so we'd be okay on that. And then on the group accident plan, like if your kids play softball and stuff, a lot of people have accident insurance to help cover those. And we put that on the platform as well. So really a full benefit package for your whole, you know, for the whole city that includes, you know, a little higher life insurance, uh, the disability insurance, it has some voluntary benefits in there, a, a lower cost health insurance option for everybody, really with um, some help on the deductibles through the health care reimbursement account, and uh, just a, a really solid plan. Uh, the uh uh, one of the big things, too, if you are you through with that, would you go over the tell them? I think that's it. I think that's almost everything I went through. Oh, no, the very last thing in yeah. here uh, that I put in there, yeah. there's always one more thing, then. Yeah. Part of this, and, and one thing here I'd like to look at, this telemed, uh, you know, a lot of us go to the doctor a lot of times with a cold, and, and we try to treat ourselves so much, and a lot of times you just, you know what you need. Uh, you need a Z-Pack, or you need something of that nature. Uh, this benefit right here is, is something that, you know, I, I would want the city, you know, regardless of some of the other stuff, definitely look at because it can help control the cost and the future for our plans. Uh, and this, what this is, it, cost, it costs the city $3.50 a month per employee. But however, if somebody has allergies, if they have sore throat, if they have anything, and that $3.50 also covers their family. 
Yes. So if their family, if their child is sick and they know what's wrong, they can talk with a doctor 24-7, uh, anytime they want, and the doctor can prescribe stuff, and they can go pick it up at the thing. They don't have to go pay a copay. They don't have to go to the doctor, you know, for minor stuff. And that's what it is. If it's something serious, they're going to recommend that you go to the doctor. So you, you'll be consulted by a doctor on the phone. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, uh, if you yeah, don't mind, I, I've got a question. Yes, sir. Um, that's per employee, or is that per insured? Per employee per month, and that covers their families. Okay, but that does, so, so if I've got an employee that opts not to buy the insurance, we can say, they can still use this. They can still use that, yes. Sir. yes. So okay. 150 times the $3.50, everybody would have that coverage, uh, okay. have that benefit. Okay. So it really, it is not compliant from a standpoint of like ACA, you know, it would count as your health insurance, but it is really helpful at 2 o'clock in the morning when you get up and you want to call somebody and just maybe check to think, should I be doing something different? You know, one thing I think of is, is public works. If, if we can keep a couple of those guys, if they, you know, have a sore throat or something, if we can get them back to work quicker, you know, it can continue, won't interfere with work as much as it does now because, you know, we have a crew here and a crew there. I, I really like that, that part of it because if you've got an employee that still doesn't want to buy insurance, even at the lower rates, they've still got access to a doctor without having to pay. So, I mean, I, and I understand it's not a full-service doctor, but still. I mean, it, it's, it does it's work very benefit. well. I will tell you that. It does work really good. We actually recommend everybody call, get set up before you're sick, that kind of stuff. Okay. That's everything. That's, 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 that's it's everything. Like, that's like drinking through a fire hose. Right? <laughs> so so that, um, at this time, um, what I would like to do then is to allow um, questions from the board. And then once the board has finished asking questions, if you can bear with us, then I'd like to open it to the employees and to the public, anyone who has a question or a concern or just a statement you'd like to make. And, um, you know, if you'd like to make a statement about just what you think the commission ought to do or not do, please do not be shy, okay? If you're an employee, this is your opportunity to say what you want to say, so please do. Um, so at this time, I open up questions from the board for the insurance company. Thank you for that presentation. No problem. Thank you. Um, I would like to ask a question. Yes, ma'am. For an employee and his family, or an employee, spouse, and two children, yes. under the 502 plan, yes. what would their monthly payment be? If we, it depends on which one of these you guys adopted. Okay. Go, go with funding, but option one, four. Option four. Um, so they would go today, and there, you only have one person today that actually has that coverage, by the way. Okay, But that one really? person's paying $445 a pay period today it would go down to $266. Must be looking at it wrong. Yeah, we're looking at these. So You're looking at the premiums at the top? I can't, I don't even, the, I'm not even looking at that. That's why I asked free, you. The, free, the freestyle sheet. So what I just asked yes. you, an employee, spouse, two children, yes. would be $266 that per would, month? Per or pay per period. That's right. So it's five. That's right, that's right, that's right there. So it's five hundred and thirty-three dollars and forty-two cents a month. That's the employees' portion. The city's still kicking in a thousand three hundred and nineteen dollars. The total premium for that family is one thousand eight hundred and fifty-three dollars. I mean, y'all's rate increase with the rate increase. If y'all would just to renew as is on the high option plan, the premium you saw it in there. Y'all want to go back? I mean, I think it's astounding. Only because I've never seen one that big. Okay, is only and I do this every day. Okay, three thousand fifty-two dollars and twenty cents a month for a family to have health insurance. That is high, high, high. Okay, so what we're trying to do is kind of to reset that bar a little bit. It's still two thousand six hundred and twenty-two dollars is with the plan changes that we've made. I would just I, I'm very eager, and I sure hope the employees will speak up. I'm so eager to find out how many would be in favor of spending. Four hundred and forty-five dollars per month out of the paycheck for your whole family, or just two children? That's a whole family. That's a whole family. Doesn't matter how many children they have. Correct. Okay. You only have one person that's taking advantage of that today. Okay. And you have two people that are in the, in the highest option plan that have family coverage that are spending. Currently, those people are spending a thousand one hundred and eighty-five dollars a month. And that's per paycheck. And then the per pay period is five ninety two at the bottom. Okay, 
Okay, let's keep all of our comments Sorry. open to the Sorry, public. I'm okay, we, we, uh, if you'll direct them openly yes. so everybody can Sorry. hear. Sorry. Thank you. I just, I really want to hear from the employees. Mayor? Yes. Who's? Must be oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Friend. I didn't know you had joined us. I thought it was God speaking to me. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love you, but I'm not God. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, let, let me just say, first of all, Mayor and Commission, I really appreciate you accommodating my travel. This is a very, very important topic. Uh, I have been following along, and uh, I appreciate the presentation. The first thing I would like to ask is the FSA account. Um, I, I believe an FSA account. I hope the employees can recognize the benefits of that. But uh, during the presentation, I don't know if you touched on it or not, but it does say that the employer can set the minimum so that it doesn't have to be so high. Um, my experience with FSA is educating. We have to make sure that if we participate in this, that the employees know that they can lose the money that's left in the FSA. So if we can set the minimum and we can roll over a minimum of 500, can you give me a scenario that maybe we could set it at 1500 It can or be set at a, way down to 500 I'm, Excuse me, Commissioner Friend, but it, it can be set at 1000 is my understanding. Yeah, we can or, do it. You can do 1500 or 1000 You can or, do it. Or it can be 1500 but the minimum, you know, the lowest could be 1000 is, is, is my understanding. And, um, Excellent. And, and that is, you know, that's... It is important that everyone knows that when they have that type of account that it's, you know, non-refundable at the end of the year. And, and um, I can remember as a very young teacher remembering the salary at that rate, you know, you're thinking, I don't know if I can put aside $20 this week because, you know, I've got to buy this with it or whatever with it. But um, if you can look at your last year's bills and make an estimate to what you might spend, you know, you don't, I, I don't recall too many people ever telling me that they didn't use it, you know, when I was, when I was younger. I remember that, so... Exactly. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, well, I was referring to the days of the salary of, I remember when the salary was $13,000, and I was wondering, you know, what I was going to pull out of that to put on a health plan. So that's what I was referring to, and, and it's not I, a good thing. If I may, Mayor, that is a voluntary thing. I mean, it's not required for the employees. That is employees. correct. No, the employees would pick and choose whether they wanted to participate or not. Only thing you'd be doing as a city is saying, hey, by the way, if y'all want to do it, we're going to offer it to you, and we're going to pay the admin, admin fee, and... And like I said, there's a little risk in there. Uh, if somebody was to leave, they could leave the money. But in the end, it's it's worth the money. And and, and the risk you're referring to, the risk if, if they decide to open the, the, the account, that account is fully funded for whatever they agreed to put in it. Correct. So that money's automatically there. It's there. So the risk would be is if they, they used it and quit two Correct. months into the job. and exactly. They'd have to game you. They gotta, they've got to be thinking ahead. So they're not. They are smart, though. Other but, questions? But, I'm sorry, okay. but so for the benefit of the uh, of the uh, the employees, it'll it'll spread an expense out over the year of an, of an exp of something that could occur in February. Correct. You know, say they have to have a deductible in February, they've got to pay. They could use that account to pay it, and then they could spread that deductible over the rest of the year. Correct. And we would recommend, just so you all know this, we need to get this done now for 10-1, but to make it easy, because the deductibles run calendar year. We'd recommend we do a calendar year FSA, right, from January to December. So we'd probably come back and, and have people re-enroll in their FSA. So they wouldn't be making that decision right now. We just need the adoption of it now so we get it set up. Does that make sense? Because yes. if we did a plan year, that would work great from y'all's standpoint, from a budgeting standpoint. But the problem with the employees is, is they would plan year out and they wouldn't have enough money. Yep. Okay. Other questions from the board? Um, well, yeah, if you don't mind, I've got one sure. more. Um, so by my calculations, if we leave the status quo as it is, with a 3% increase, we're looking at 107 and some change. If we go with the 95% plan we're talking about at 72, that's a $35,000 a month saving that the city is going to see. Well, the net's really today you're spending 70000 so it would have gone up to like 73000 
So if you look down at the bottom of that, so it's 70,000 today, and it would go up to 72,000 if you're left at the same. So the net cost, yes, sir, there's a net to that. The actual premium at the top of the page, the total premium for the insurance today is 104, it'd go to 107. We're going to lower it down to 90,000, but we're going to give a lot of that back to the employees and payroll reductions. Does that make sense? We'll go to the employees. City, we, we almost remain status quo, 1.6% uh, increase. Yeah. Versus if we just stayed where we're at today, that would be a 3% increase. And then how do we fund the, the HRA? The HRA? It would be 1.6% plus the HRA contribution. So let's say it's $47,000. Okay. Um, if it, I'm telling you, that would be a really, really big number for HRA contribution. But if it was. I, 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 I like the concept of the... Um, well, obviously, I like the 95%. I, I'd, I'd prefer to see 100%, but I have, uh, I've been, I don't want to say school, but I've been explained why maybe 100% is not, not an option. Um, but uh, uh, the, the $5,000 deductible for the upper plan, I, I would like to see the HRA um, um, reimburse the employees more than, than just 1000 We We can do anything you like. Uh, we're just putting numbers together. Uh, part part of what I'd like to do, Mayor, if if after all comments, mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to go through each thing individually and get y'all settled on. You know, do you want FSA or no? Do you want which plan? Do you want dental? Those kind of things, and then we'll roll it all up into a motion. And I think that sounds like like a really good plan. And um, I, I just had one question as well. Um, with the 95% funding and what we're talking about, would, does that make us, <clears throat> I've been looking at some of the other cities in the county, and I think if I'm correct, that brings us into a competitive level with everyone very, else. Very competitive, and I think you would have a lot of happy employees. Okay, because Lynn Haven is the second largest city in Bay County, and we, we, we do need to have our employees feeling comfortable about where they work and feeling like they're cared for and feeling like they're respected. And I think that this might be a, you know, a good, a good step in that direction. So any other questions or comments from the board? Okay, at this time I'd like to open this to the public. And this is only to speak on the insurance, no other topics at this time. There is a, an, an item five, or excuse me, yes, item five later if you have other topics you want to talk about. But any employees, any members of the public who would like to come and address any questions or concerns about this insurance proposal, this is your opportunity. So I welcome you to the podium. Sure, come on up. And per Florida statute, you do not have to state your name, address, telephone number, anything else. You can just chat. Just tell us what you I will say. volunteer it. I'm Steve <laughs> Enfinger. I'm a police officer here in Lynn Haven. Um, I'm a single father. Is there, I couldn't see everything that was up there from, way, from where I was way back there, but is there um, an employee plus dependent option rather than just having to do a family plan? Yes. Yes, there is actually, um, and I'll show it to you while we're right here. Sure. This is actually the, the, there's four tiers of rates. So there's employee plus children, one child or multiple children. And it depends on which plan you're in. These is what, this is what the payroll deductions would look like. So very affordable yeah, versus. Yeah. I, I like that. That's what's really burned me in the past is it's either single or family. Uh, with me and just one child, I mean, I, I couldn't even. Literally for the low family. option plan, it would be $114 pay period which is fantastic. It is. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you. Others? Yes, sir. Come on up. I'll get my name, too. I'm Mitch Oakley, a resident of Lynn Haven. Thank you for your presentation. It was good. Thank you, sir. The employees of the town, I hope you, hope you really get a good shake. I've taken two fairly large companies through this process. I want to caution you on the uh, generic versus the real drug. It was a small percentage, but I now pay $430 a month for my wife for one prescription. Uh, she was in that small percentage that had to have the real drug. Okay, so keep that in mind. I, I would go to your doctors and screen me. Am I going to be able to go generic or not? Um, the FSAs, the set aside monies. Yes, Who mon you say you monitor those no, monies? Sir, the, money the, the money for the FSA actually stays at the city until it needs to be funded. Okay. So the money's never leaving the city. Until I guess the girl in the room, room, everybody kept saying that the employees are here and I may lose it. If I lose so it, you it, walk away with No, sure. Basically <laughs> what happens is this. That's a very good point. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. So the way the FSA works is the federal government says, hey, we're going to let you put this money aside mm -hmm. and you're going to get to pay pre-tax dollars and not pay taxes on it. 
Sure. And because of that, the employer is going to save some money too. And their risk is that they've got to make that money available to you day one of the plan. Okay. What's and the disposition of that money? If I had a million dollars left at the end of the year, for instance, that I didn't use, what's the disposition of that money? Basically, they only can use the money to offset future cost of the plan. Okay. So as people, uh, if they terminated and gamed you, like we were saying, and they took ran off with $1,000, then basically, if there was a thousand dollars left in forfeitures, they would offset their cost. They'd have no out. And Not final out. question. I'm okay. Trying, no thank you for this. That's a good. Question. Our final question is: uh, How are you compensated? How, how do you make okay. your money? Very good question. So we get paid co uh, commissions from the insurance carriers. Okay. And they're actually in the RFQ that they did is what we accept as commissions okay. on the plan. So you got set percentage. Oh yes, you do. Yep. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Other yeah. questions from the public? Yes, ma'am. I was in a flexible spending um, promotion at Sally May. Okay. My question to you is, does that cover, we could use it for Band-Aids, aspirin. You're only talking deductibles. Is it just deductibles? No, ma'am. So it's, it, the flexible spending, they have a list of things that the government allows you to use it for. One of the things they don't let you do right now is over-the-counter stuff. Okay, they did for years before the ACA. Uh, but all of your co-pays, deductibles, glasses, braces, stuff for your kids, and even if you don't cover your kids under this health insurance plan, you can use your FSA money for them. Okay. Okay? I also would like to say I'm very grateful that y'all are looking into this. Awesome. Anyone else have a comment or a question? Hello. Um, I'll comment. I don't really have any questions. Um, you did a very good job of explaining it. Thank you. My name is Caitlin England. I was employed with the police department for almost four years at the city of Lynn Haven. Um, I can say coming into the police department, uh, some of the plans that we had, I was actually single and living on my own trying to start a career. And at the time that I came into the city, I was not able to afford the insurance plan. Um, you know, rent, unfortunately, right now is between $800 to $1,000 if you're going to some place that's decent. And when you take your police car home, it has to be a decent place because um, otherwise bad things happen. <laughs> so um, paying that and then trying to pay the insurance on top of it was just not even possible for me. And over those four years, I've also watched families come and go and other officers come and go because they couldn't afford the plan and they left for other opportunities. And I'll admit, I left. Um, the city of Lynn Haven, because I went from here paying over $200 a month for insurance to a place that I only paid 30. Um, that made up a big amount of money that I got to put back in my pocket. And even though the pay wasn't that different, that made a huge difference for me. Um, I've actually ended up coming back to the city. Um, I'm hopefully trying to get back employed. But that's because I like the city of Lynn Haven. Um, I like the place that it is. I like the people that work here. And I like what it's about in general. So doing this and offering it to your employees, I really do honestly believe that you will get better employees and people that will stay longer because it is a good place to work. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mandy. Um, I work over in the water department. Um, I know Mr. Russell said that 100% wasn't an option, but why can't it be an option? I mean, maybe if you, or, you know, had one plan that you offered everybody and paid 100%, and then if we wanted to pay for our families, we could pick up the difference. Could we look into that option? I think that's a good question. City Manager. Yeah, uh, part of the reason is, is you know, if we have employees that uh, are on military, just take the military for instance, we're a military community, mm -hmm. and should a lot of them have, tri is it track tri tri here? Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of them are covered under there. It makes, if we do 100%, it makes our insurance the primary coverage and not theirs. Okay. So that's part of it. And, and to be honest with you as well, I think as far as insurance, I think it's good that each employee has a little skin in the game due to the fact that we will be a little bit more cautious, I hope, by going to the doctor, maybe using telemed and still going to the doctor as much, uh, and try to treat yourself a little bit because and ultimately we're responsible for the rates. You know, rates can be, can be a lot better if, if our claims is not as high. And that was that was the behind that decision. Okay, Mayor, if I may, 
Chair. Yeah, one of the things that was explained to me that our rates are directly reflected by uh, our usage. So the more our employees go to the doctor, the more they go get medicine, our rates are going to continue to climb. So the best way analogy was, and I'm, and I'm still that guy that wants 100%, but the theory is that we want you to have, like you said, a little skin in the game, so maybe you'll call telemed that won't affect the rate instead of going to the doctor. You know, but I still want to cover it absolutely as much as we can, and, and that's our goal. Anyone else have a comment or question? <clears throat> My name is Ben Jenke. I have uh, two questions. Um, the first question, the, if I have to do, go to a, a regular doctor, what will be my copay? And then also for a specialist. Um, and then the second question, you had mentioned um, that you didn't really have time uh, in the last couple of weeks to really go shop and see mm -hmm. if Blue Cross Blue Shield is the best choice for, for the city. Yes. So, what do you envision if, let's say, the commissioners decide to go in this direction and, and hire you for health care services? What do you envision over the next 12 months? That's a great question. Okay, uh, question one on the co-pace. Uh, we can go over that for you real quick. So the low plan option, the primary care co-payment is $30 and the specialist is $55. And on the higher plan, it's $35 and $85. So pay a little bit more on the higher plan because you have that real rich drug card, okay? Um, we've kind of already laid out a plan for the city. One of the things that we were asked is about timeline so that we're not backed up like, y'all are not backed up like this again. So we actually have a timeline. Six months prior to your effective date, we'd be meeting with the, the council to go over kind of how the plan looks, where it's going, what do we want to do for next year, and when we shop all the other plans out so that about actually about a hundred days in front of your actually effective renewal date, we already had those. So next year we will look at all other options, the United's, the Aetna's, and everybody else that's in the business. So to really kind of check it. So this year, I think y'all made the final decision on Wednesday uh, or Tuesday night last week and Wednesday morning we got notified and we had a Tuesday, Wednesday, ship it over here on, on Friday for you guys, or Wednesday, Thursday. So it's been a little tight. Um, just a scenario for the employees, um, the, the savings card that we were talking about, <clears throat> if you um, think about during the course of the year, if you went to the doctor four times and your copay might be $25, and that's all that you spent last year and you're a single employee, you might just want to put a couple hundred dollars on that card. And then as Ben was just asking about the $30 the copay or whatever, then you would have that Visa card to take with you and you're only having a small amount taken out of your check every time, so you re wouldn't really feel that copay at all is the beauty of that. So it doesn't have to be, you know, a huge, a huge amount at all. I have a question. So if we, um, as a commission, chose to pay 95% of every employee, what kind of cost are we looking at? The entire cost for the city, like the, the, the dollar amount? What we would pay, yes. yes. What, what, what would our part be per So ba basically today, with the way that y'all have it set up today, the city's on the medical only, okay, just the medical insurance. Forget the dental and stuff, which is mm -hmm. really not very much money. But uh, on the medical insurance only, the city's net cost today, after the employees contribute, is $70,863 a month, okay? Under the new plan that we're recommending, it's seventy-two thousand one seventeen dollars a month. Okay, and that and that would pay ninety-five percent. Yes, ma'am. Of the employees' cost. Correct. Right. Plus, I want to throw in there. Keep on say plus the health care reimbursement account. So let's call it forty-seven thousand dollars a year. So we add four thousand dollars to that. So the net cost would basically be about seventy-six thousand dollars a month. And today you're paying seventy thousand dollars a month. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments from employees or the public? Anybody? Looks like we've... Okay, um, I okay. think what um, our city manager would like to do, and, and I'm going to just sort of join in the, in the voting here, is he's just going to go through each piece of this for, yes. the, for the board and see what the board has questions about or what you would like to approve, and then we'll, um, somebody can roll this into a motion for me in a second, and we'll see where we go. Thank you all so much for your I'm participation. Gonna sit here and make yes, notes if, yes okay. if y'all two would make notes, because Vicky's on the headset, she's going to make notes, and I'm making notes, so we get it all together. All right, I guess the first, the first 
item would be the FSA. And the main thing here, as you know, is the city picking up the 485 administration uh, for the employees who decide to do that. Does, I guess the best thing, is there anybody want to discuss that or anybody not in favor of that? Quick question. Do, uh, do we need a motion and a second on each one of these items? No. I, no. What I want to do is straw you first. And then we'll go back through and make a motion. Okay. I think that's to be the easiest because, if, you know, keep keep making motions. All righty. All right, the FSA. The next thing we're going to come to is the medical. Uh, you have four different options here that we've laid out. Uh, the recommendation that uh, would come from, uh, I guess, me would be option four. Uh, however, you do have uh, three more options to look at, uh, but I'll leave that to y'all to discuss if, you know, which option is good for you or not. <coughs> Excuse me. Go, like. Go ahead, Commissioner Barnes. I, I like option four. You like option four? Okay. Do y'all have any trouble with option four? No, I'm looking for it. Just give me it's just the a separate second. sheet. Oh, yeah, that's actually the one I wanted. The one you wanted. Mayor. Yes, um, Commissioner Friend. Thank you, Mayor. Could you, could you just remind us of the deductible option four? The deductible. To the employees. Yeah, the deductible for option four was that we would have the 5302 plan, which you have today, which would still be the low option plan, but we would change the drug card, okay? Mm -hmm. And then on the high option plan, we're going to raise the deductible from $500 to $2,500, okay? So $2,500. And the max out of pocket goes up from three thousand to six thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. But then we're going to use the health care reimbursement account to help offset that money. Between that and the cost savings of the plan. Does that Got it? thank you? Okay. Okay. Here none. I'm gonna move on with option four. Okay. Okay, the next the next item is the HRA. And this I think that y'all might want to talk about a little bit because we just threw together a scenario for you to look at uh, and uh, West, I'm sorry, Owen, uh, no Owen just mentioned the different deductibles uh, and you, you know, that's up to y'all to decide if you want to go higher than the, the, uh, the example on page 20, which uh, right now on the standard plan is uh, calendar deductibles 5,000 employees responsible for first four. Uh, employer pays uh, the last thousand. Currently, we do not n do nothing with that plan. Uh, and then on 5773, uh, we will be moving from a $500 deductible to a $2,500, and the employer will be responsible for the first $1,500, and we pay the last thousand. Now, that's that's the example. Now, if you want to pay more or less, you're welcome to do so. I I just have we have this in here as an example only, so. I'm, you know, I'll leave that to you. And how many employees we look at? We're building the end of for 20. I think 20 would be uh, a very, very. Uh, we'd be hard pressed to get 20 of them to have 20 reimbursements. And I think you said something earlier, so I made a note about that. Uh, yeah, yeah. At a minimum, I'd like to at least see us split it. You know, if it's got a $5,000 deductible, I'd like to see the, the city pay for $2,500 with that deductible. And on the on the on the twenty five hundred dollar deductible, I'd like to see us pay half of that, so twelve fifty. So half of each plan. Yeah, at a minimum. That way, that way it reduces the the maximum out of pocket expense for an employee to, down from sixty three hundred down to um, what would that be four thousand one hundred? Is that right? Right up. And plus the cost savings that they'd save on the plans, they would be very close to where they are today. I mean, they're already. They're already at a max situation, even the way we have it set up here. If they hit the maximum out of, po out of pocket, they're going to spend the same money, amount of money they spent last year. Okay, It would just be a better situation for them if you did that. Look, Commissioner Russell, you, you're saying half on both of those? Yeah. That, that, that's what I'd like to see. Okay. I mean, I'd love to see it, let's pay 100% of it, but that's, you know, I don't think that's an option right now. Hopefully. Next year, when we get our, our, our new losses and we, we realize we're going to save money, hopefully we can readjust this and make it even better. Exactly. Okay. 
Rodney, did you hear all that? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Hearing no other decision, I guess we'll look at half of each deductible. Okay. Got that, Owen? I do. And what does that bring our cost to? I would say that we double the 47000 It's basically what we just did. Yeah. So basically 90, let's call it $100,000 of health care reimbursement cost. So as, we're at we would 100000 a, budget, a month per month? 100000 a year. year. A year, okay. That's so if. If yes. everybody used it. Okay. If everybody used it. Okay. So Just I think we budget for thing. that, and then if you're under, you're under. Okay. 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 All right. The next thing is the group dental. Uh, from the staff standpoint, uh, and and also from a personal standpoint, I've had met life as well. And in, in the. My, I'm, I'm I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, just because she said that made me made me question. That money is paid by the city into an account. That that, that money doesn't go to y'all. That that's stays in our coffers. Yeah, so it's not like okay. I just want to make sure you knew that. So it's paid on an as needed basis. Yeah. Yes. So basically, okay. the way we do that is that we'll set up a we'll have a form that the employees will use to submit it to us for reimbursement, and then we're going to reach out to you guys and have you fund that money, and we're going to cut them a check. Okay. So we'll come up with a. As far as the logistics of that, you know, how the frequency of it, because if you paid it once a month, they have to wait for their money. If you pay it once a week, you get it quicker. There's not that many of them. I mean, just mm -hmm. truly, because most people are using it for copays, deductibles, coinsurance, and then they're not, you really, because they're in charge of the first part of that deductible. Sure. It's much, and really, realistically, even though we're making the plan changes this year, we have to decide, you guys have to decide, uh, because the plans, will change on October the 1st, okay? So their health care reimbursement would run from October 1 to December 31, and then next year they would start again is the way it would really look. So, okay. Sorry. That, no, no, okay. I, yeah, that, I'm, I'm clear now. All right, on the dental would be the next thing, Adam. Uh, if we leave, we can leave everything the same uh, and same coverage, or we go to MetLife, which, uh, we would get an extra, the employees would get an extra $500 worth of coverage at no cost. So you, you go from a $1,000 annual plan that they actually pay out of pocket to $1,500. So, you know, you can get a little bit more dental work for that. So our recommendation would be going for, with two met life for dental versus the Blue Cross. I have no problems with that. My, I do have a question. Okay. As far as the dentist, that participate in this. Do we have enough dentists in this area? We have very good coverage okay. uh, for dentists in the area, so you should not have any issues. Should not have any problems at all. And we didn't do a, a, a uh, line by line. We have other clients in the area that have MetLife dentists, and we're not having any complaints. Okay. That answer, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, now the next thing is vision. We do not offer that currently. Uh, I would like to recommend to you that you allow the employees, because I've had several come to me, would love to buy group vision insurance through the city because it'd be a lower rate. Uh, I would like to add that to our, our portfolio, and of course they can buy it on an as-needed basis, and it's, they would fund 100% of that. I just have one question about the vision insurance. Sure. Um, do the other cities in the county offer vision as part of their package or is it voluntary for them as well? I would have to look, but just knowing s several uh, corporations and all, typically they do not pay for vision. Typically it is medical and dental uh, and, you know, some other benefits. I know, I know the schools did not pay for it, but yeah, I was most, just curious. I, I do not know that answer. I can find out. Okay. I just don't want anybody to leave us for glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, they would. Right? <laughs> you, you hope they don't. Uh, the next thing to review is the group life insurance. Of course, the city pays 100% of this uh, benefit for the employees. Uh, if we wanted to stay where it's at today, it's $25,000, $25, or for an extra $640 yep, something dollars. $638. $638. Uh, you, could, you can increase the benefit to $50,000, so it doubles the employee's uh, Insurance from twenty five thousand to fifty thousand. Now, be something that y'all would can discuss. Either leave it the same or increase it. Mayor, sure. Go ahead, Commissioner Friend. 
Thank you, Mayor. I, I would just uh, entertain that we keep this part the same. This first year we're be taking on from the, with the city. I agree that the rate increased to fifty thousand for the lot. If we have an opportunity not to add additional cost, it might be it. Okay. So <laughs> your your thing is to leave it as is, correct, Rodney? Yes, sir. Just to see. okay. Anyone else on the board about the the life insurance? Well, on that life, I just want to clarify something. Yes, okay. Six. You said six twenty-eight or six forty-eight. Mm -hmm. Yes, it'd be the difference between the the thousand twelve dollars and fifty cents and one thousand six hundred fifty. So. It, and it, you're advocating that, that the city pay for that? No. Well, what I'm saying is, uh, currently the city has life insurance, and you have the option of leaving it the same, okay. or we can increase. I, I don't. Either way, I'm I'm kind of leaving that to y'all. I'll be honest. My biggest my biggest hurdle with this was getting to the insurance part, medical insurance, because that's the biggest savings for the employees. And that's what we can do for them today. Is that something that the city can afford to do? We can afford to take it to 50000 We can afford it, yes, ma'am. When I, when I look at, um, it's, it's only around $600 a month um, extra. And when I look at the kinds of expenses we have in the city on you know, sometimes what we would consider frivial things. I know we spend large amounts of money on paper and, you know, that. Oh, yes. And we're talking about going to more technology and less paper. And uh, <clears throat> if someone was lost, you know, to us, uh, you know, through some tragedy, um, $25,000 is really a pittance to leave to a family to try to take care of, you know, funerals and, and whatever. So, you know, again, do, if we value our employees, we need to tell them so. And um, $600 a month, if the city can... You just said we, we could afford, afford it. it. I, I say we go for that. So, so. I, I would concur with that, too. Okay. All right. Well, we'll recommend in the, I'll roll that up into the motion that we increase it to $50,000. Do you understand, hear that, Rodney? Yes, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, I'd also like, and, and I want to roll all this up into, uh, I'm sorry, not that. Uh, but also allow, and this would be at the employee's uh, at the employee's expense if they want to purchase extra supplemental life. So if they want over the fifty thousand, or if they'd like to buy their spouse some insurance or some insurance on their children, uh, we'll have that option. I'd like to recommend that we just allow them to do that, and that'd be part of the motion as far as the supplemental life insurance. I hear nothing on that. Uh, the oh, next, I'm, I'm good with that. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Uh, I see. I seen everybody's heads nodding, so that's the reason we're I all, said we're all good. So, you on page. All right. The next thing is long-term disability. Uh, currently, uh, the employee, you know, you have your vacation and sick time. Uh, currently, the employee employees does not have any long-term disability insurance other than what they purchase for themselves uh, or short-term disability. This long-term disability, as, as Owen alluded to earlier, would, would pay them 60% of their paycheck should they be out for an extended long period of time, which the benefits would start paying on the 91st day. So, you know, you're talking about three months. Is it retro pay? It is not. No. And how long will it go? It will pay till their normal Social Security retirement age, whatever that is. And so would, we, would the city actually keep them on the books and but I mean generally what would happen is is that you would terminate their employment after they're no, they can no longer work you can't keep paying them right. anyway so you terminate their employment at that point in time they would go on long-term disability insurance they go long term and they'd be taken care of yep. to a certain extent today they, they there's nothing right does unless the, they pay does the city do anything for them if they're determined to I mean does I mean do we as a, as a city no <laughs> How many days about kill somebody? <laughs> I, just referring, nine, I know 90 days without a paycheck would oh, yeah. put a serious hurt on but somebody. The, you know, the good thing about long-term disability, when it picks up, it picks up at the 91st day. So if they can creep, if they can rely on their sick time, vacation time, and this, this does include workers' comp, so anything that happens here, they're taken care sure. of. But this happens if they're in a car wreck, 
you know, something that's not their fault, but, you know, they get where they can't work, uh, you know, the 91st day they, you know, they start receiving some kind of benefit. Um, and that's totally up to y'all on and that one. Are you proposing, what are you proposing? Uh, my, from a corporate standpoint, a corporate standpoint, uh, that's all I can, I can tell you, I can, I can tell you typically corporately it's taken care of. And what's the cost of this? It's uh, 3000 one hundred and eighty four dollars a month, correct? That is correct. Yes. It's a little higher. That's right. And we would only pay that on on everyone? No, that would cover everyone. That's the total premium for the that's entire That's the total school. premium for hundred and fifty five employees. I know the school district does not um, cover disability insurance. I know we we, ha we we could get that at a fairly um, inexpensive rate through a through a company. Um, I don't know what the other cities or the county does about disability. I'd be interested to know. Uh, well, I'd like to just say this. Um, I had an employee years back at Sally May who went in for a very simple surgery. He was 51 years old. He had four children and a wife. And he didn't come out of the surgery as he went in. And he was in a nursing home the rest of his life. He, he did pass, but he was there for a long time. And without that disability, family would have not been able to function. I like the disability. You like the disability. <laughs> Russ? I, I do too. I mean, I know it's thirty. So it would be a cost to the city a year, but of, about of, thirty-nine thousand for those two. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Rodney, you have any thoughts, sir? No, I, I like it. Okay, sir. Thank you. Commissioner Barnes, any thoughts on the disability? I'm good. Okay. Uh, the next thing is the critical <coughs> illness and and the you know the different accident policies. And this would also include things that the employees have with AFLAC uh, currently on their own. Uh, currently, they are paying individual rates. Uh, if the, and the employees are welcome to continue doing that. However, if they enroll with ours, which will be with possibly the same carriers, correct me if I'm wrong. They would, yeah, they would be different. They wouldn't be with AFLAC, but they would. Be okay, I, they would all they would pay group rates, which would reduce the amount extensively. This does not cost the city any extra money. This is just another added benefit to our portfolio. I, I support that. Okay. And lastly is the telemed. Anybody have? I don't think anybody. Y'all kind of all spoke on that one. Okay. I'm, I think I got that. You're good. Um, at this point in time, <clears throat> would someone on the commission who's made careful notes care to roll that into a motion? <laughs> you want me to explain it? Um, no, I understand what we're talking yeah. about, but I have one more question yes, before okay. I vote on anything. Um, so basically, um, <clears throat> never mind. I'm going to hold Edging that one. I'm going to hold it. Yeah. Mayor? Good? Yes, go ahead. I, uh, I move that we accept the uh, city manager's recommendation with all of the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Benefits. Benefits that have been presented to this commission. I second it. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. It was not very specific. Is everybody good with every all the different? Would you let me repeat? Them? Let's 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 let um, our city manager just repeat uh, everything. I mean, I think that Commissioner Barnes's motion is fine. I would just like to repeat it all one more time, just to make sure we're all on the same page. Thank you. I know when you listen. It's not the original recommendation. It's the revised recommendation based on the discussion we just had. Yes. yes. Uh, that would include the city picking up the administrative costs for the FSA. That would include the medical benefits for option four. That would include setting up uh, the HRA for half of each deductible on each plan. That would include dental insurance with MetLife. That would include the city increasing the life insurance from 25000 to 50000 uh, That would include the city uh, adding telemed and picking up the cost for that. That would include the city picking up the cost for long-term disability for the employees at 100%. And then any ancillary such as vision, supplemental life, and any critical uh, would be picked up uh, by the employees at their cost. And uh, however, they will have the ability to go through uh, of interest to get those services. That was my understanding of the motion. Was that everyone else's? Yes. Nick, are we good to go ahead? And if I may, 
option four is a 95% coverage for the employees and a 60% coverage or, or payment uh, for spouses and dependents, correct? Correct. Yes, sir. Right. On the low plan, right? And the high right. plan is the 80. 80, yeah, that's right. 80 and, and 60, 80. 80 and 60 in the high plan. The, the lower yep. plan has a $5,000 deductible. Lower, the higher plan has a $2,500 deductible for which our HRA is going to pay for half of those deductibles for each employee. Right. So the employee's deductibles is net $2,500 for the lower one and $1,250 for the other one. Correct. Okay. Okay, I think we're good. Mr. White, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Mr. Tender? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. The motion stands approved, and the employees of Lynn Haven have a brand new insurance. <laughs> Thank you for that presentation. Uh, we look forward you know, to a long um, relationship with you, and Thank we're you looking forward to working with you. Um, at this time, we'll move to the last item on the agenda, which is public commentary. If anyone would like to talk about what we've just talked about, or if you have some new business you'd like to bring before the commission, this is your opportunity to speak. There appears to be um, none. So thank you all for attending, and um, we'll see you at the next meeting, which is Monday, September the 11th at 3.30. We began a long day. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Meeting adjourned.